a KQED HD production. They are the creatures of our nightmares. Shadows silently lurking within the cold, dark depths. In the underwater world, they are the masters. The great white shark. Most people think that white sharks are just brainless, killing machines, the ultimate predator in the ocean. It can eat anything, it can kill anything, nothing can kill it. They're wrong. The beast of our imaginations may not be the monster we think it is. Twenty-seven miles off the coast of San Francisco, a group of shark hunters arrives at the Farallon Islands. At any given time around this island, we have uh, 30, 40 great white sharks. But they're not here to catch a shark. They're here to meet one. Look that way. A private company called Great White Adventures has taken a group of eco-tourists out to the islands in hopes of getting an up-close encounter with a great white shark. Nervous divers gear up and then a cage is dropped into the bitter cold water. The Farallon Islands are prime white shark habitat, and each fall during the seal breeding season, large concentrations of great whites come to this very spot. Scott Anderson has been studying the shark population here for more than 20 years and has gotten to know these animals well. The white shark community that's here is adult males and females, mostly males. Uh, the ratio is two to one males to females. Um, and the males average between 14 and 16 feet and the females are 15 to 18 feet. And so these are big mature animals. It's sort of a prime feeding spot. So in being a prime spot, the healthiest, largest individuals are able to exploit it. And the littler, smaller sharks are forced to feed somewhere else. The Farallons mark the western tip of an area extending from Bodega Bay to Big Sur, ominously known as the Red Triangle. In the last 60 years, half of the 99 reported shark attacks on humans in California have taken place here. But given the millions of people in the water every year, that number is statistically minuscule. Sharks are not actively hunting human beings. Humans are attacked by white sharks as a result of mistaken identity. I mean, we do our very best to look like white shark food. It's amazing to me that more humans aren't bit. Most often, the victim is wearing a black wetsuit. You're on a short surfboard with your legs and hands dangling from the side of the surfboard. And the shark's looking up in our green coastal water and seeing what looks like an elephant seal swimming overhead, of course it might mistake you for an elephant seal. The great white shark is the largest predatory fish in the ocean. They can grow up to 20 feet long and weigh as much as 5,000 pounds. Highly adapted ambush hunters, they have a well-developed sense of smell keen eyesight, an exceptional electrosensitive detection apparatus, and a famous jawline that contains as many as 300 very sharp serrated teeth. They can't chase down a seal or sea lion. A seal or sea lion is much more maneuverable, much faster swimmer than a white shark. So what they do is they mug their victim. They're swimming at 15, 20 feet underwater, looking up, looking up, trying to see the silhouette of a single seal or sea lion, and then from behind they'll rush up and then try and bite it with one massive bite at the surface before the animal escapes.
Even with all the attention paid to great white sharks, we still know surprisingly little about them. It remains a mystery exactly how many there are, and no one has ever witnessed a white shark giving birth. Scientists are still learning about their feeding behavior, growth rate, and even where, when, and how they breed. What is known is they are curious and aware, and seem to be always exploring their environment. It is not a mindless predator. It is a fairly sophisticated animal. There is interaction between individuals, there is a rank order in feeding, and most certainly the females are dominant within the system. Are they the strongest, toughest animal in the ocean? No, humans are. Despite their fearsome reputation, it's sharks who are now in serious peril. The predator has become the prey. Sharks are in trouble worldwide. Shark numbers have declined so dramatically during the last 20, 30 years that most biologists can't imagine that this could even have happened so quickly. And in the numbers that it has happened worldwide, more than 90% of the big fish in the ocean are gone. These are the marlins and the swordfishes and the sailfishes, the big tunas and the big sharks. There are nearly 400 different species of living sharks, many of which are now facing possible extinction. Humans kill more than 70 million sharks each year. Although global numbers are unknown, research shows many shark populations are crashing. They're particularly susceptible to human overfishing and killing because sharks have so few young. It's something like a white shark won't have more than half a dozen or a dozen young in its life, even if there weren't human beings on the planet. To feed a seemingly insatiable appetite for shark fin soup, many shark species are being pushed to the breaking point. Now, because of the Chinese market for shark fin soup, people are fishing directly for sharks, catching as many sharks as they can in the open ocean. And it's becoming a very valuable commodity. Their fins are sliced off, then they are kicked overboard. The writhing sharks are unable to swim and sink to the seafloor where they slowly drown. The sad irony is that shark fins have no flavor, little nutritional value, and actually contain substantial amounts of toxic mercury. America has disallowed shark finning as an industry, but I can go in San Francisco and buy shark fins today in the market. It's, it's a real tragedy, not only because of the wastage of life on Earth, but because of the ecological damage that's done because the sharks are disappearing from the open ocean. As apex predators, sharks are vital to maintaining the natural health of the ocean. In order to better protect the white shark, researchers with the Tagging Pacific Predators Program, or TOP, have been following 179 great whites in the northern Pacific. Using satellite and acoustic tags, the scientists from Stanford University, NOAA, and other institutions have mapped the migratory patterns of these majestic animals and gained some revealing information. Originally, people thought maybe the sharks went from out here at the Farallons to the coast and back and forth, and they were always in the general area. Um, but from the satellite tags that we put on, we know that the sharks, after, uh, let's say, sometime in the middle of February, they leave. The tags have shown that the sharks spend the majority of their time in three particular areas of the Pacific, the North American shelf waters off California, around Hawaii, and a puzzling area scientists call the White Shark Cafe, located in the open ocean approximately halfway between Baja California and the Hawaiian Islands. It's a huge area, and that's where the sharks end up. Um, what they're doing there, we don't know yet. We know they do a lot of diving, but whether it's related to feeding, resting, or some kind of mating behavior, just don't know. Um, but it is interesting, they all go there and they all leave after a certain uh, time of being along the coast here. 
Researchers were surprised when acoustic receivers installed to listen for salmon picked up the signal of five tagged white sharks entering San Francisco Bay at different times in 2007 and 2008. But since it was generally thought that great whites stayed outside the Golden Gate, there were no detectors set up inside the bay to indicate where they went once they entered. There's quite a bit of information that's come out in recent years that tells us all kinds of stories. But um, we still don't really have the whole picture yet. Still, when, you, when it comes to the end of the day, when the sun goes down, nobody knows where they're swimming or what they're doing or how they're going about it. So um, there really is still a big mystery out there. The more information scientists can gather, the better we can help protect these magnificent animals in the future. And for the divers at the Farallons, fear is being replaced with respect. To see a big white shark is sort of, uh, it's one of those moments that stops time for you and you forget about time and what you were thinking about and you just become uh, sort of in awe. Anytime you see an animal in its natural environment doing what it does naturally and, and you appreciate that, then you, you become a friend and you're on, you're on that same level with the animal and you can't help but appreciate it.